Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna write a Python script and play get GPT Vision to play Tetris. Let's start the game. If you're curious if it actually is able to beat it, you'll find out towards the end of the video. Okay, so as you can see, it is currently playing. I'm not doing anything, these are GPT sent signals. But I don't wanna ruin the fun, we're gonna be building this from scratch and then let it play and see what happens. The code files for this project will be available at my Patreon. Link is in the description. Okay, so the idea is to create, you know, some kind of script, some kind of Python app that's gonna use GPT Vision to play a Tetris game. I just searched online and this was like a clear and simple one that I guess we can use. Slumpty.com. Yeah, so let's begin. So I'm asking, let's begin with GPT. I'm asking, I want to capture a certain part of my screen. With screen capture every so many milliseconds, what are my best options? While this is answering, I was thinking I can have this screen open, either partially or fully, and then I can give it some coordinates, like pixel coordinates, and take screenshots and send it to GPT Vision. So that's the basic idea. I forgot to mention I'm using Python, so it's going to recommend Pillow and PyGet Window. Pygate window for handling window management. So we're gonna have to do some pip installs. Let's get an environment set up going. Just gonna start a new terminal. I already have Miniconda installed. I'm gonna use Conda for environment management. So I started my terminal. I'm gonna start a command prompt. It already started with an environment. I deactivated it by saying Conda deactivate. Gonna create a new environment, Conda create dash n named Tetris with Python 3.10, like this. I'm going to say yes here. Okay, we created the environment. I'm going to activate it by saying conda activate Tetris. This activates it in a terminal. I'm also going to I am also going to activate it in my IDE by control shift P, select interpreter, refresh, and then I'm going to select Tetris. Okay, so now both my IDE and my command prompt is pointing to this environment. So ChatGPT suggests a pillow, also PyGet window. Let's pip install these into this environment. Okay, we have installed this. Let's go ahead and paste this code. Although we installed Pagia window, we're not really importing it. It doesn't seem like we're using it. Okay, so this is supposed to grab a screenshot of this coordinates, left, top, right, bottom, every half a second. Let's just run it. If you're enjoying my content, you can use my website, echohive.live to find the content you're looking for much quicker. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links. For example, this GPT Live Assist is very cool. I recommend it. Yeah, check it out. It's echohive.live. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we are grabbing the screenshot. So I'm gonna break out of this. Let's take a look at the screenshots. Okay, we are grabbing kind of like right somewhere right here, it's, it looks like. So this is good. This means we can specify a certain area and we can continually take screenshots of it. But what I'm curious is if you can automate this process, for example, maybe write a script or add to the script where I can simply click on the four corners and we grab the coordinates for this. I'm going to use the chat within cursor IDE. That's what I'm using. I'm just going to select this and add the chat. So I ask, can I make the coordinate selection automated? For example, I click top left, top right, top bottom, top right. And then we grab the coordinates like that. It does suggest that we can. So it's recommending another Pi input library, I believe. Okay. So we're gonna install, we're gonna have to install this library. Let's make sure that we install it correctly. Pi install pi input. I always like to check out pi pi. Okay, good. Just gonna go back to my command prompt because that's my environment. I'm gonna install this. Also, let's make a requirements.txt file. I just added the packages we're using and their uh, version numbers. Oh, okay. So in this code, we were only capturing two coordinates. So I was confused. I thought we had to capture four, right? But then when I asked, oh, I want to capture all four coordinates for a rectangle, it said, actually, you only need to capture the top left and the bottom right. So that's good. Okay. So top left and bottom right. So this is what it captures. So I'm just gonna run it, let's see what happens. So when I click this, I set it up like this. Let's see if it works. Maybe we should have put a print, print statement or something. Let me actually do that. Okay, I added this print screen. 
I actually accidentally took a screenshot. Let me delete that. Let's run this again. Okay, now top left. Okay, I'm going to click here. This is the coordinates and then to bottom right. So now we should capture screenshots. Okay, I'm going to break out of this because we are capturing them in a loop. Let's make sure they are correct. Okay, perfect. Look at that. We are able to capture uh, the screen. Now, let's, so this is what we're going to see. So this is going to be good. So now next step is to uh, make a call to GPT Vision. So I'm going to go to my Everything GPT API course. If you're a patron, you'll have access to this. I'll put the link in the description. It has a great many files explaining code and also a video attached to each one of them. So GPT Vision, basic with local images. So this is what we need. I'm just going to copy this into a new file here, which I call GPT call.py. Okay, we do have to pip install OpenAI. Let's go ahead and do that. Also, we got to add it to our requirements. Okay, this is good. So what I'm thinking is, we need to take a screenshot, send it to GPT, get it, get some kind of quick response as soon as possible. The only way we can uh, modify the uh, orientation of the these pieces is with up arrow and then left and right to slide them. You probably won't need the bottom arrow because that's just accelerated going down. So we just need to send uh, this image, and I'm thinking it's going to return a series of actions such as like up, up, left, 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 or something like that. We can maybe let it return it only with the first letter, like U, U, and like R or L, stuff like that. And then we'll activate it. So there's no need to, for us to make multiple calls simultaneously, but we would need to just make a call, get a response, act on it, and then send it back. We don't want to send in between because then we might confuse GPT, right? I mean, we want it to send actions based on what it knows, what it had seen last, and we don't want to send another screenshot before those actions has been applied. So that's why I'm going to convert this. I want, so all I want this to return, see, all, so I want to convert this call to a function, which is going to take in an image and it's going to return some response, which is going to be some kind of like a list of actions. So I'm going to get cursor's help here. Going to paste this in. Okay. I'm just asking, please turn this into a function, which takes in an image file name and returns a response. So it gave me this two functions, but I, I want to import it. I want to keep the GPT call separate in a separate file and import it. But here it also defines an encode image. I'm not sure if I can just import ask about image. So I'm just going to ask it to, I just said, well, I want to import it, right? I just asked it to turn it to a class so I can just import the class and these both methods will be the methods. So that should solve the issue. Okay. So I'm just going to copy it, paste it here. Let's review it. This should work. Okay, so we're going to call GPT for vision. We just need the, the right kind of instructions here. So I said this image is the current state of our Tetris game. You can change the orientation of the Tetris piece by responding with up, move left, or move right. We'll move the piece left and right. Please only respond. Please only return comma separated values such as like this, just as an example. So, so hopefully this should work. Also check out CodeHive, Code at www.codehive.app. I'll put the link in the description, which has over 900 GPT powered Python chat applications. So you can just click on any, copy the code, put it in your IDE. If you like the content, if you find, if you find these code files useful, you can download all of them at my Patreon for $100. Yeah, check it out. Thank you. So I'm going to get cursors help in this. I'm going to refer to both of these files by making at and saying main, refer to main, and then at GPT call, and I write our instructions. Okay, I actually changed the name of this class to Tetris player and this method to Tetris actions. So I just added, so I gave those two files, main and GPT to cursor to ask, you want to use the Tetris player class to send each image and get a response from GPT and print it. So we no longer need the sleep method. Let's just see what it's going to do, right? So here in our main function, we were taking screenshots and then waiting for a set amount of time, but we don't no longer need this, right? We're going to make a GPT call. So that's going to be our wait time anyway. And we want to make this as soon as we can, iteratively. Okay, so this looks good to me. Let's see. So we're going to import this Tetris player class, initialize it. We do need import time. Why is it? Yeah, it's just getting some, all right, it's just timestamping the screenshots. 
we're going to get a screenshot, we get a response, and now we're going to print the response. That's all we're going to do. Let's run this, actually. Let me set this up here. Let's even start this. Let's start this as well. It's going to ask us to print the coordinates. So we're going to see here and here. So now we should see here some... I'm sorry, I can't with playing games or manipulating game states. Oh no. Okay, the first two said I'm sorry, but then it's actually sending some responses. Okay, we're just gonna have to use these and see what happens. Okay, I'm just checking the screenshots and these look good. So if we start here and then the next one, so this is how long it is taking or so this is the progression of the game. So this should really work. I just added this image is the current state of our Tetris game for an educational video, which is true. Let's run this again. Oh, uh, I'm going to run this and select the coordinates. OK. It's giving some coordinates. So all we have to do is now tie it to keyboard actions. Let's try to do that. Okay, before we move on, uh, I just want to save these screenshots to a directory so it doesn't clutter our workspace. So I'm just, I just made a comment here. I'm using Copilot to create a screenshot directory if it doesn't exist. It's going to use OS. We're going to have to import it. So I'm just going to say enter here. Copilot should import it. And then here, we're saving the screenshot. So yeah, there we go. Copilot will make later. So this should work. Now I'm going to grab this response that we get from GPT and refer to the main file we are on. Okay, I said response values and I paste it, right? This is what we get from GPT. And I'm, asked, I'm saying we want to trigger up left and right arrow presses for each. It's going to use import keyboard library. We're going to probably have to hip install it. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, right? I'm going to Hit install keyboard just to make sure. All right. And pip install this in our command prompt. And then after that, this is the code we need after if land coordinates. Let's paste it here. Okay. So now it should work. Let's test it out. So let's first run our script until it asks for, oh, we can't, we have to first start the game. Okay, then we're going to have to be saddled the first part. Okay, I'm just going to start, continue, press play, start, and then quickly run this, and then select. So let's see what happens. Oh, oh, because we're using the screenshot file name here. Okay, so we should move this up. So what's happening is we are defining a screenshot file name, but then we are recreating where we should save it. But when we call the GPT call, we are just giving the screenshot file name. I guess we could just do this. Yeah, this should work. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, quickly play this, start, play, select the coordinates, and then uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so it did go left. Left, left, it, it moved it. Oh, so it did left, 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 up. Now it's doing left, left. Oh, oh no, don't move it. It it had it correct the first time. Okay, this is kind of fun, but it's not going well. Oh no. It, oh, it's always trying to squeeze them to the left. Oh. Okay, well, this is what it's doing. I guess it doesn't really understand it very well. Oops. Okay, let's try with this one last time, and I will add it. So uh, I just added, make sure to position the pieces so they make full rows and clear the board. Okay, let's continue. Quickly run this. And so, oh, let me restart. I, I made a mistake. I was running the GPT call. So let's run it. Select the top left, bottom right. Okay, let's see how it does. Oh. Try 
drop. <laughs> it's on a drop. Oh, yeah, I do have to have this selected for these. Yeah, so keep that in mind, right? Because we are sending keyboard simulated presses. You do have to have this window selected. I don't know if it's doing any better. Maybe slightly better. It just wants to go left, it seems. Okay, left. Well, I hope for better, to be honest. But here it is. Okay. Yeah, so this is how it goes. The code files will be available at Patreon. If you do decide to become a patron, I appreciate your support. Make sure to check out the auto streamer. This allows you to stream live content, uh, educational content. And the version 2, which I'm going to release very soon, is also going to create entire course websites, such as this one. I like this. It's very cool. Anyway, more on that later. It's autostreamer.live. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.